hello again. Uh, here we go. We have a situation here where we have the age of a student and over here somebody has recorded the height of the student. Do you think there's a relationship between age and how tall you are? Do you think so? Well, if we were to put it down onto a graph, kind of like this, if we were to draw a basic idea about what this situation looks like, do you remember from the last video that we said that the vertical part depends upon the horizontal part? Or in other words, the, uh, the y depends on the x. This part is dependent, and this part is independent. So with age and height, which one is independent and which one's dependent? Okay, you guessed it. Height, I don't have room to write it there. So height, and that's in centimeters. Whoops. That depends on the age. Okay, so height depends on age. Age does not depend on your height. That would be weird. Otherwise, short people would be young and tall people would be old. In this case, height definitely depends on age. So when you're zero and before you're born, you're basically <laughs> you're zero centimeters. But uh, in this particular situation here, we're starting at 13 years old. So that'd be somewhere around here. And the height here is 155. So if you were having to graph this, you'd have to uh, make a scale on the side. And you'd have to make a scale over here and then start to plot this all. And once you had all of your dots plotted, you would probably have what's called a scatter plot. So um, today what we're going to do is look at how to do this situation on a graphing calculator. And uh, if you have a chance, just go ask your teacher and say, hey, can I borrow a graphing calculator? And uh, he or she should let you, hopefully, if you're a trustworthy person. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. I'm wondering, uh, first of all, before we do that, what do you think this scatter plot's going to look like. Do you think it's going to go up or down or just is there going to be random dots everywhere? What do you think? Think about it for a second. Push pause if you have to. Okay. Like you, I would agree that I think this thing's going to kind of go upwards. Basically, the older you are, the taller you are. And as you know, we all get older to the point where we don't grow anymore. And uh, when we get much older, we actually kind of shrink a little bit, so the dots might, you know, start to go down. But in the beginning, especially in these years right here, there's a lot of growing going on. So, um, so we're just going to focus on this for now. Let's see how our graphing calculator deals with this. By the way, a graph that goes upwards and it's kind of going up in a straight line is called a linear, uh, a linear graph. It's almost in a straight line, okay, and it is increasing. Okay, if the graph was going down, that's called decreasing, going down from left to right. So from left to right, this one's increasing. Okay, so with your graphing calculator, feel free to stop at any time. Um, I've got mine on the screen here. With your graphing calculator, first start by turning it on. Push pause any time. There might be some numbers on there that you see when you turn it on. We want to get rid of everything so that you have a fresh calculator. Here's how you do that. Start by pushing the second function button right here, and then the plus sign, okay? Then number seven, which is reset. Then number one, which is all RAM. And number two is reset. Your calculator should be reset now. It should say this, if you have the same calculator as what we see here. Okay, I'm gonna hit clear just to clear all of that. And what we're going to do is put this information right here onto the graphing calculator. Okay, this is how you do it. And you have it on a video so you can always rewind to see what I'm doing. Okay, you start by pushing stat. And then you push enter right down here. So you basically choose number one or, or enter. And you get L1 and L2. Okay, in L1 here, we're going to put the x values, the independent values are going to go here. In L2, we're going to put the dependent values, which are the y values. Remember, it, uh, dependent and independent. So, 
the dependent values are here, independent here. Let's start. On this table right here, you can see that the independent values, which are age, is right here. Notice it's 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 18. Notice that there are two 16s. That means they just picked two people that happen to be 16. And sure enough, they're different heights, but that's just the way it works in real life, isn't it? We're not all the same height. Okay, so let's start by just typing these numbers down into the calculator. So it's 13, then I can hit enter or I can hit the down arrow. Either one works. 14, 15, and you can do this along with me if you want. 16, 16 again, 17, and 18. Okay, I want to go to the other side, so I push the arrow to the right. Okay, well I'll hit enter first, and then I will push the arrow to the right. And here is the, the heights that we're going to put down here. So at 13, we have 155 centimeters. Okay, then 163 centimeters. 171. 180. 145. 187 pretty tall. And the tallest of all happens to be the 18 year old, 195. Okay, so we've got everything lined up here perfectly. Here is how you make a scatter plot using a graphing calculator. Are you excited? Okay, here's, here's how we do it. You start by pushing the second function button and then you push y equals right here. It actually says stat plot in yellow. Okay. Right now, it's right here, and it says off. We want to turn that plot on. So you just hit enter, and hit enter again to turn it on. See how it's flashing on right now? Look across here. These are all different types of graphs. Uh, a line graph is right here. A bar graph is right there. And this is called a scatter plot right here. Notice the X list is L1, just like we talked about before. The Y list, or the dependent variables are L2. Okay, so that's all good. That's all great. You can hit enter, it won't really do anything. So you're, you might be saying, what do we do now? Well, you could hit graph and you see nothing. That's not a big deal because we're not zooming in on the right area. Notice I said the word zoom. Well, there's different ways to zoom in. I'm going to choose you can pick window and choose the the minimum and the maximum x values which are these values right here and you can choose the minimum and maximum y values which would be the minimum would be like 155 and 195 but I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just show you this zoom feature right here where I'm pointing with the mouse okay zoom and if you click down all the way down to here it says zoom stat if you hit zoom stat, it's going to automatically zoom in on the information that we just entered into our chart. Look at that. We have a chart right now that has all of the dots that we entered. Um, notice it almost goes up in a straight line. The only problem is there's one down here. This is called an outlier. I don't know if you need to know that word or not, but they're called an outlier when you have somebody who doesn't quite fit the, the regular pattern. You've got someone here who's 16 years old and at 145 centimeters, so that's why they're down here. They're the shortest person, but they happen to be 16 years old. Okay, But here we have our graph. We can see it. Uh, it's increasing, and um, I'm not sure if you need to do much more than that on these uh, graphing calculators, other than be very proud that you've just created a scatter plot. You could hit trace if you wanted to, and notice that it tells you the x value and the y value. Look at that, 13 and 155. 13, 155. Hit the next arrow over. 14, 163. 14, 163. Isn't that cool? It's showing you all of the data points that you entered. I try to. Oh, I wonder if it's going to get that outlier. Hmm. No. Anyway. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so that's how you make a scatter plot using the graphing calculator. So one more thing, one more word I want you to know about. This is the last thing I'll say on this video. So if you have a graph that is basically starting from the origin 
and it basically goes in a straight line upwards. Yes, I missed these dots, sorry about that. But if it basically goes in a straight line, it's called a linear, uh, a linear equation. Um, there's a special name for that. It's called a direct proportion. Okay, that is a graph that would start at the origin, which is right here, and move upwards from there. That's a direct proportion. Okay, later on in this course, I'm not sure how far ahead, it will tell you about. Uh, I'm not sure if they use the word indirect proportion or sometimes they use the word partial variation. Sometimes instead of proportion, they use the word variation. But I just want to get you used to words like that because sometimes in grade 9 applied math, they'll throw out words like proportion, variation. I don't want you to be confused. I just want you to say, oh, a direct variation or a direct proportion is when it starts here and goes upwards. A partial variation, I'm going to write that down. A partial variation or partial proportion is when it does not start here, but it starts, let's say, up here and moves up or it could move down. Okay? And remember our example from the last video where it cost, uh, I think, $500 for the banquet hall, and then for every person that came, it would cost more? Well, that was a partial variation because it started up here. Even if zero people came, it would be 500 bucks. Do you remember that from the last video? And then from there, it would just go up as more people came. Okay? That's called partial variation, and this is called a direct variation or direct proportion when it starts from here. I think I've said that enough times, you're probably uh, tired of hearing me say that. So I will stop now. Good job. I hope the graphing calculator works for you. You're welcome to use it in this course, and uh, good luck.